Hello again, everybody, along with Joe Simpson, Skip Carey, welcoming you to another night of Atlanta Braves baseball. Braves go for their fourth in a row as they meet the Milwaukee Brewers. Again, life is good, really, Braves 13 and a half up in the National League East, but is our, as is always our habit, we try to find something negative, and, well, the defense has been that lately. It has been struggling a little bit, and uh, when you're playing that well and you've won four in a row, it is hard to pinpoint one area where you're probably going to have to pick up the pace, but the defense is one. The Braves have made nine errors in the last five games, including four last night, and that's the most they've made in any game this year and equal to the most they made in any game last year. But it's an area, I think, when you're leading by this much, Skip, I think it's easy to sometimes lose your focus a little bit or your concentration on some areas. This is an area where the Braves are going to have to knuckle down a little bit. It has hurt Greg Maddox, and it has hurt Tom Glavin in recent starts, and Tom Glavin will be out there tonight for the Atlanta Braves. And you can see, too, that the double plays are down a little bit over the last few weeks. Meanwhile, a guy who patterns himself after Glavin, former Brave Brad Woodall, We'll do the pitching for Milwaukee. We'll be back with the starting lineup. Then the play-by-play -play story right after this. America's number one selling exterior stain. We had over 46,000 here at Turner Field last night for the first game of this four-game series between the Braves and the Brewers. And it looks like we're going to have at least that many here again tonight. Here's the Tylenol starting lineup for Phil Garner, who hopes to see more than just a half inning of tonight's contest. Fernando Vino will lead it off and play second base. At shortstop is Mark Loretta, Jeff Cirillo at third base, John Yaha, cleanup hitter. Jeremy Burnitz is in right field. Marquise Grissom in center bat sixth. Bottom third of the order, Mark Newfield. Bobby Hughes, the catcher, and Brad Wood, all the former Braves. For the Braves defensively, some changes with the lineup out there with the left-handed starter on the mound. Bautista, Andrew, and Williams in the outfield. Ozzie Guillen gets a started shortstop, as does Tony Graffinino at second base. Everybody else remains the same. For Tom Glavin, who's on the mound for his 20th start, he has one complete game. He's going after win number 13 and to try to tie David Cohn and Greg Maddox for tops in the major leagues in that category. Right you are, Joe Simpson, and Fernando Vina will lead it off. Glavin into the wind, and the game is underway, and the pitch is high. One ball, no strikes. Bobby Cox talking before the game about how much he admires Vigne. He says he irritates the daylights out of you, but you know you'd love to have him on your club. Right in there, it's Uno and Uno. Anytime you're willing to put a part of your body in the path of the baseball just to reach base, you know that guy's willing to do anything. Another big crowd, and they're still filing in here. Two balls and a strike. Pretty good breeze blowing out to right field. You get one in the air tonight to right. Might have a chance to get one out of here. That's low, and it's three and one. Did you run through the umpires, sir? I did not, but it's a good crew. Go right ahead. All right. Rich Reeker will be behind the plate. Sam Holbrook is at first base. Harry Wendelstead is the crew chief at second. And Jerry Lane is at third. Hit hard to third. Chopper to chipper. One up. Vina is retired. One away. And Mark Loretta is the batter. Interesting trade today. The Pirates acquired pitcher Todd Van Poppel and minor league infielder Warren Morris from the Rangers for pitcher Esteban Loiza. And you would say, why would you give up Loiza for Van Pompel until you sort of analyze it? Warren Morris is a young infielder, second baseman. Strike to Loretta, who's playing at Tulsa. He's hitting 331. He's driven in 73 runs and hit 14 homers. So if there's anybody who's a throw in in that deal it's Van Poppel right not the minor league kid. Mm -hmm. I was talking to a scout about him before the game he said Morris is one of those guys that wasn't supposed to do anything in professional baseball he can't run but he's stolen 15 bases or so can't hit but he's hitting 330 and can't hit any homers but he's got about 15 of those. A little bit outside two balls and a strike to Loretta who's hitting 321. This guy missed a few games. He's having a terrific year, but he got hit in the ribs on a pitch from Kerry Wood. That Ooh. set him back. Yeah, I would think so. Top foul back and out of play. 
Roswell George's Tony Phillips back in the big leagues. He's been called up by the Blue Jays. FP San Angelo on the disabled list for Montreal and former Brave shortstop Ray Holbert has been called up. Good for Ray. The 2 2 pitch. Swung, a little looping pop fly. That's going to dunk in there for a hit. Williams had him played shallow, but he just served that baby out there. Renner at first, one out. Thought he was just barely able to reach a change up. Phil Garner last night ejected between the top and the bottom half of the first inning. He and Lamar Johnson both thrown out by Jerry Lane for arguing balls and strikes. I was interested to see the pregame meeting. Phil Garner brought the lineup card out, handed it to the home plate umpire, and then shook hands with Jerry Lane as if to say, okay, that was yesterday. We're starting new. And that's the way it should be. And that's by and large the way most umpires feel too. It's a new day. Swung, chopper to third. Out there. Out there. Nice scoop, Andres. And the inning is over. 5 4 3 at the end of a half inning. No score. The producers of Basketball have searched their new movie for scenes that will not offend television viewers. They're still looking. Basketball rated R starts Friday, July 31st. Did you know shopping online can improve your golf game? <laughs> you spend all sorts of money on any kind of gadget you can imagine. You check your Discover card statement, and you go online, and you go, okay, I remember that. Thank goodness I'm getting money back. It pays to Discover, except it where you see the Novus sign. You're on the TBS NASCAR circuit with Richard Petty. I'll tell you, you can have the fastest engine, smartest crew chief, the most aggressive driver. But if your team don't work together, you ain't gonna win. Team chemistry in this sport's everything. And you have to have a chemistry between your driver, your crew chief, and your chief engine builder. Teams that are running the best seem to have good chemistry. You can take the driver and then make a car and, and all the hoopla and all the money right out and throw it over in a garage somewhere and leave it. It takes guys that work on a car every day to get along and be able to jail and make that a team. I, I don't know that you achieve it. I think it either is either there or it's not. The key to it is you've got to have people that want to win. Well, it's just time working together and learning each other and uh, getting a, a good feel for what's going on. You can't say enough about people that get along, understand each other, and, and everybody's demands and their needs. Let's face it, we're on the road together almost 40 weekends out of the year. So chemistry is everything in the world. Richard Petty wants you to know your NASCAR only on the Superstation. We go to the bottom half of the first inning here at Turner Field, and time to take a look at Bobby Cox's lineup tonight. And Isaac Ian will lead it off tonight. He's at shortstop. Gerald Williams will bat second. Chipper Jones, Andres Galarraga, Javi Lopez, more familiar names there in the middle of the order. Andrew Jones moves up to the sixth spot. And then Danny Bautista will try to snap out of a slump. Tony Graffanino on the road to recovery. He's had some good games back to back, and Tom Glavin bats ninth. For the Brewers defensively, Newfield Grissom and Bernitz from left to right. Cirillo and Loretta will be on the infield on the left side tonight. Vina and Jaha on the right side. Bobby Hughes will do the catching and on the mound. Former Brave Brad Woodall, 29 years old now, six foot, 175 pounds, born in Atlanta, but lives now in Blythewood, South Carolina. He is four and four, two and two as a starter for the Brewers, and this is his eighth start for them. And his first pitch of the ball game is a strike over the outside corner. It's 0 and 1. If the Brewers, of course, traded Fernando Vina for Kevin Young, then they'd have a Loretta Young double play combination, wouldn't it? It would be, yes, in keeping with what you just said, yes. High and inside, one and one. It's unlikely that that deal will happen. Tony Womack might be headed somewhere else, though. That's what we hear. Especially with them getting that fine looking second base prospect. A little number to third. Funny hop, but Cirillo's equal to it. Strong arm, guns him down, one away. Brad Woldall's got a sneaky fast fastball that he has to use to get ahead in the count and at least establish it inside a little bit because his bread and butter pitch is a good changeup. Pitch is a lot like Tom Glavin, especially to right handed hitters. And you'll see him try to get them to chase pitches down and away all night. He looked like he was going to be a great prospect for Atlanta until he had that foot injury, and then he came up once I remember it just got 
kill. He had about three starts in a row and struggled. Really struggled. Yeah, you felt badly for him, but he's battled back, and here he is in the big leagues. And doing a good job. He's ahead here 0-2. That was a good breaking ball. He'll mix that in once in a while, just to give you something else to look at, but he doesn't throw that many curveballs. A little pop, short right field. Our turn, but there goes Vina. Look at him run. Gerald hit that one a little too high. Two down. Chipper Jones, the batter. Chipper at 319 with 24 homers, 74 RBI. Has yet to hit a home run from the right side this year. One ball, no strikes. Up the middle, solid hit. Andres Galarraga, the batter, he's two out of three lifetime against Brad Woodall. One of those hits a home run. That's six straight for Chipper Jones. He's having a terrific month of July. Came in hitting 455 for the month, left-handed and right-handed both. And it doesn't matter that he's really not hitting that many home runs right-handed because he doesn't get that many at-bats. Boy, he's hitting some solid shots right-handed. And there's a look at what he has done through his stats for the month of July including that base hit. Galarraga looks at a strike. It's 0-1-1. Look out. One and one the count. Everybody tries to pitch him in that same spot. Fastballs up and in. Well, and that's what Woodall has to do, not just with Andres, but with everybody. He's got to pop a couple of fastballs in there to get you off the plate. Two balls, one strike. Brad won 15 games in 94, was the International League most valuable pitcher. Swinging butt. Cirillo's got a great arm, and he uses it there, and the inning is over. One hit, no runs, no errors, one left at the end of one. No Another in-depth baseball conversation here between innings, between Joe and I. Whether it's for a birthday, graduation, or any other special occasion, Chop Talk makes a perfect gift for your favorite Braves fans. Call 1-800-700-CHOP and subscribe to the official monthly magazine of the... Atlanta Braves, John Sherholz, Bobby Cox have columns in that publication. They keep you up to date on all the Braves minor leaguers. So give them a call. 1-800-700-CHOP and John Jaha leads off the second. What's your offering this month? My offering? In Chop Talk. You still write a column in that, don't you? Yes. I forget. Oh. And the pitch is outside. One ball, no strikes. No, I, I just answer questions from fans. Like infield fly rule slugging percentage. Getting pretty good at that, aren't you? Yeah. The 1 0 pitch. Two balls, no strikes. There is one radar gun set up down below today by the scouts, and that's by Jim Guadagno, who has one set up every game. But I don't think there will be too many speed guns brought, brought out tonight to check out Glavin or Woodall. No, no oohs and ahs this evening. Two balls, one strike. Still filing in here. Business is booming, folks. At the moment, 46,500 sold for tomorrow night's game. 42,000 for Sunday. 42,000 for Monday night against the Cubs. 44,000 for Tuesday night against the Cubs. Then 10 days later, the Cardinals come to town. Jaha falls it back on Friday. 740 game 44,000 are gone for that one 45,000 for Saturday and 42,000 for Sunday those are Mark McGuire days tough ticket I 
fly ball pretty well hit left field. Bautista has got room on the track. They built the park just big enough. One down. He's the kind of hitter, Skip, like Galarraga, that can get fooled and still yank the ball out of the ballpark to just about any part of the park. He was out front, had committed his hands a little bit, kind of one-handed that swing, and still came very close to a homer. Tom Smith, our director tonight. Glenn Diamond, our producer, doing yeoman work in the truck. Jeremy Burnett swings and misses. 20 homers, 67 RBIs for this guy. And a lot of strikeouts. Yeah, feast or famine type hitter. On the corner, it's 0-2. 96 strikeouts and 345 at-bats and stops in the league. Well, everybody has to lead at something. Mm -hmm. Right off the end of the bat to avoid a strikeout there. Javi's throw with a new baseball just about got the bat ball. That's a pretty impressive number. The Braves have not allowed a home run since that two home run day by Sean Green of the Toronto Blue Jays when they were in Atlanta. A long time ago. I don't know if Javi ever saw that ball. It zipped right by him to the screen. By the way, Mark Wolers, whose mother suffered a heart attack a few days ago. I talked to him tonight. She's doing much better. We're happy to report send to her our get well greetings Jack swing he's out of there that's 97 strikeouts and the second out of the inning first strikeout for Glavin on the night his 93rd of the 98 campaign good breaking ball Tommy says when his slider is working you know he, he said he gets accused of not being able to throw his change up as much to left-handed hitters he said but really I do you just don't notice it as much because I'm throwing more sliders to them and you're thinking about the breaking ball away instead of the sinker. Here's two old friends dueling one another Marquise Grissom and Tom Glavin Marquise 0 for 5 last night left a bunch of runners on but hit a couple of rockets that were caught. One and one the count he's at 286 on the year. Same two teams tomorrow night will start at a half hour earlier Kevin Millwood against Steve Woodward. And on Sunday afternoon, John Smoltz against Jeff Juden. Swing and a miss. One and two. Regular batting practice, not enough for Marquise and Jeremy Burnett. They were both in the Braves under stadium cages, taking some extra BP today. Got him. Over the inside corner, Grissom didn't think so, but he's called out. And the inning is over. No hits, no runs, no errors, nobody left. Bottom half of the second inning, scoreless game. We go to the bottom half of the second inning. I checked with Don Sutton before the game. He's still going into the Hall of Fame. I ask him that every day. Have you changed your mind? No, he hasn't. You know how when some big event was coming up, your parents always took you down to the local Barber shop got you all slicked up, ready for the yeah, event. Yeah. You check Don out. He is yeah. ready to go. He is. He's he is trimmed up. Look at him. He is raring to go. Boy, we're only what two weeks away? Less than less than two weeks. Less than two weeks. Pitch is low to Javi Lopez. One ball, no strengths. He's been playing catch in the backyard with Mary too. He's afraid they're going to make him like throw out the <laughs> first first pitch at the. Full timers thing. Tough hop. Cirillo's equal to it though. Low throw. Jaha's equal to that. One down. Now that's going to be a fun day. I can't wait either. I'm just glad that we get to tag along. It was nice of him to invite us and nice of TBS to pick up the tab. But you'd think the guy wouldn't wouldn't have to use the media guide. Let's go, John. Well, he's just helping Pete. <laughs> Oh. You mean Mr. Budinsky? <laughs> Here's Andrew Jones. Meanwhile, back in the game, nothing's happening. The wind and the pitch. Strike on the outside. Corner, it's 0 1. We are scoreless in the second.
That's something that the right-handers you'll see happen up, have happened to them a lot tonight, and that is to be out on their front foot a little bit. You got to stay back with Woodall, maybe even spread your stance out a little bit and wait. Home run cut. He came up empty. Andrews only faced Brad once, and that at bat resulted in a home run. They the, faced him out of the bullpen in Milwaukee on that trip, first of June. He gave up four runs in two innings. Doing better than that tonight. The time is called by Rich Reeker. Now Andrew stands back in there. A little bit out in front on that one. Strike him out, but you got to throw him out. That's accomplished. Out number two. First strikeout for Brad Woodall. Bautista hitting 189. Got to get that bottom of the order against lefties going. 189 for Bautista, 216 for Graffinino. Target was set up down and away, and it actually came back a little bit. That's not exactly where Brad Woodall wanted it, but just as effective. And that was his changeup. Bautista takes one a little high. One ball, no strikes. Yeah, you're right about that with the left-handed starters. The record is 10 and 5 against left-handed starters, but the number of hits recently against lefty pitchers has not been very high. That ball is well hit into left center field. Let's see if he got enough. Yes, sir. Danny Bautista goes deep in the Braves' lead. Home run number two. really believes in Danny Bautista and despite his 189 mark Bobby doesn't hesitate to put him in the lineup every time there's a lefty pitching lately because he knows he's going to come around 13th home run ball so surrendered by Brad Woodall in 69 innings that's a bunch here's Tony Graffinino line drive center field solid hit He's hit the ball much better, and I know you talked to him about that before the game, Joe. Well, one of the things he said that he had, was not doing was not holding his hands high enough. He said he was missing a lot of high fastballs. He said, but also his, his open stance was hurting him. And we talked a lot about how he was not covering the outside part of the plate. Well, he's closed his stance up, and he thinks that's going to go a long way toward helping him. And while playing for a couple of years with Brad Woodall, he said, he got me in Milwaukee and struck me out. He said, hopefully I'll get some revenge tonight that I overthought yeah. in Milwaukee. This time I'm just going to look for the ball and hit it. It works. Glavin takes inside. One ball, no strikes. By the way, Joe, I talked to prominent uh, furniture mogul Jack Kennedy today. He said he'd send you his warmest personal regards. It's nice. One and one the count. 401 feet for Bautista's home run. Despite losing down in Florida, Tom had a couple of hits in that ball game, and in fact, six in his last eight at bats. Tapped foul past first base coach Pat Corrales. Bobby Dews is over third. One nothing Atlanta in the second inning. That solid contact. Hopefully, we'll get Danny going. Inning is over. Strikeout number two for Woodall, but a Bautista homer gives the man of the lead one of two hits in the inning. The Braves leave one after two, one nothing. Booz and Woodall do in the third. Big crowd on hand. I don't know if it's capacity, but it'd be close. The James Keener family here from up in Tennessee rooting for the Braves tonight. Newfield hitting just 244 with two homers. Glavin misses outside. One ball, no strikes. High pop right side out of play. Gerald Williams gives it a look but has no chance.
A lot more scouts tonight at the ball game. We were telling you last night you're going to see more and more at the ballpark for the next two weeks, especially with the trading deadline two weeks from tonight. High chop. That's trouble if it's fair. They're going to wisely let her roll foul. Did you see Randy Johnson pitch last night? I saw parts of that game. I would say that any rumor about an arm trouble there is overrated. He looked great. Well, what's going to happen there, or what might happen, is that despite the Mariners being 10 games back, you know, there was talk about some wholesale changes over there to improve their ball club and get ready for next year. Well, now they might just fight their way right back into the race yeah. and eliminate any chance of another team acquiring Randy Johnson or anyone else off that team. Baltimore is trying to do the same thing, but boy, they got a long way to go. Check swing grounder. Nice play, Chipper. One down. Third assist of the night for Chipper Jones. Bobby Hughes, the batter, a 228 hitter, four homers, 19 RBI. Now Baltimore's won eight in a row. Boy, that makes it tough when you're in their situation. What do you do? Because all those guys are getting older, and if you don't come back. They're still 24 and a half back of the Yankees, too. The Yankees aren't going to give up much ground. Where are they as far as the wild card is concerned? They're still pretty far back, aren't they? Yes, they are. Yeah, they're 10 and a half behind the Red Sox, even in their own division. Right. Boston has the best record among wild card nominees. Hughes comes up empty. It's two and one. Tommy Glavin told me after his start down in Florida, he said, if I was going to throw a shutout this year, that was the start I was going to do it. He said, believe it or not, I felt like I had my best stuff of the year, and yet he comes up a loser, gave up 11 hits in six innings. Three balls and a strike and struck out eight. So yeah. It was a schizophrenic type night for him. And some boots made behind him and a couple of flares. And he only walked two. Full count now to the Brewer catcher. Woodall, a switch hitter, bats next, and he's hitting 385 on the air. Six out of 13, I think it is. Mets lead the Phillies 1-0, bottom of the second. That's one of those series where if you're a Braves fan, you hope they split. And you win all your games. Every night you know you're going to gain a game on somebody if you win. Right now, Philadelphia is a game ahead of New York in second place. They've really turned things around. The second half say, of last year. Mm -hmm. A team you don't give much thought to because you don't see them play much. There's a solid shot. Got by a chipper. That'll be a hit, I'm sure. Second safety of the night against Glavin. I mean, if it's not Kurt Schilling on the mound, you don't hear much about the Phillies. And unfortunately, their ball club, or fortunately, he's not the only part of their ball club that makes a difference. Tough we'll, chance for chipper and a tough hop. We'll get a look at them next week. That was scored a hit, as I'm sure you figured it would be. Runner goes. They play hit and run. Galarraga took a look, then wisely stepped on the bag runner in scoring position, two out. That's a pretty good compliment to your pitcher when you hit and run with him. He was three for three in his last game in Chicago. Brad was a tough luck loser in that game as Mark Clark threw a shutout at Milwaukee, beat him three to nothing. So Fernando Vino will be the batter. He stalls around a little bit to get Woodall back to the bench. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. There you go, Brad. He jogged the last few steps. I'm just going to say it's early enough in the ball game, and I'm sure Brad's in good enough shape. He doesn't have to walk all the way back from first base.
Yankees and Blue Jays 1-1 in the fourth. We'll have all the scores for you shortly. Watch Vina from our center field camera. Now when he gets set for the pitch to be delivered, he really pushes his hands back and sets his jaw right on his right shoulder. It's like that's what gets him started. That's where he wants to begin. He's got both eyes glued on the pitcher. Just missed outside, a ball and a strike. First time I heard about Fernando Vini was the night he got a cheap shot from Albert Bell in yeah. the baseline. Speaking of his chin. Have you asked anybody on our, any of our guys lately about Mark Lemke? Yes. Um, who was I talking to? I think it was Ned Yost. I was talking to a New York about Mark the other day and he's still not feeling very good. He's back in Atlanta. Hopefully on the mend. It's been a long time. Mm -hmm. Well, when you're feeling better, Lemmer, come out and see us. You can sit up here with us. And you don't have to talk. We'll just make fun of you. <laughs> Then you're around in the chair. Yeah. Up the middle, Graffinino will make the play in plenty of time, and the inning is over. One hit, no runs, no airs, one left. We go to the bottom half of the third inning. Graves on top, one nothing. Phillies by that score. San Francisco also has scored to take a lead over Houston. The American League, Boston and Detroit tied it to the Yankees in Toronto are tied now. Green has hit his 18th homer. Cleveland failed to score in the top of the first at Chicago. You're up to date on games that are underway on the Office Depot scoreboard. And Ozzie Guillen will lead off the third inning for Atlanta. Danny Bautista's home run, the difference in the game. Guillen grounded to third on his first trip He doesn't seem to mind hitting off left-handed pitching with the Braves five for 18 now for the season. Plus he's been playing long enough every day to be able to make whatever adjustments he needs to make. Tried to pick himself off a cameraman down that right field line broke his bat in the process. And the count evens the ball on the strike. Gian Williams and Chipper Jones here in the Atlanta third. Two balls and a strike. Saw Ozzy rubbing some pine tar stuff on his bat when he was going up there with the new lumber. It's it's like a rosin, only it's in solid form. Called Shrouzen. Uh huh. He's going back to get some more. There it is. Oh, he broke his bat. He's gonna have to get another bat. That'll be three on this particular trip. And he just told the bat boy to give it to the young fan sitting back in about the third or fourth row. That's nice. I wonder how long it took Glenn to find a computer type thing that would be this much in the way. It's almost impossible. Who, Phil? No, Glenn. I know. Oh, he's in the way too. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what we should use it for as a drink trick. Two balls, two strikes. A little looper that's going to dunk in there for a good start to the Atlanta third inning. 
fourth Atlanta hit of the night, and Gerald Williams will be the batter. They wanted to try to jam him inside, but if you come up and in, and watch where this pitch is, if it's upstairs, it's an easy pitch to fight off. And that's exactly what he does. He just hits a flare out to short, out behind short. If it's down, that's a tough pitch to handle. There's not a whole lot you can do with it unless you're way right out in front on it to try to hook it down the line. Good speed at first base. Gerald Williams shortened the bunt, took it outside. One ball, no strikes. Downstairs, 2-0 oh, the count. Business is booming at the 755 Club again tonight, and as always, the chop house is jam-packed. It's a happening place, the chop house. Into the corner. Let's see how far Guillen can get. Newfield comes up cleanly this time. They'll hold him at third. Renner's at second and third. Nobody out. Gerald Williams, another dividend. And the Braves try to break it open early here with Jones, Galarraga, and Lopez coming to the plate. Nice, quick, short swing by Gerald Williams, and Isaac Guillen is fun to watch run the bases, too, in this situation. Gerald just dropped the head of the bat on this pitch against his former teammates. But if Ozzy were a car and he had a spoiler on it, you know, like yeah. for a wind deflector, he'd have an ejector button just to get that spoiler off because he can't run with a helmet on. No, that helmet was halfway between first and second. So Chipper is the battery single to center his first time. It's one nothing Atlanta and the Braves threaten for more here. To the screen 0 and 1. Gerald continues to hit well against lefties too. He came in hitting over 420 against left handed pitching and another hit tonight. One five and 0 for Atlanta 0 2 and 0 for Milwaukee. Our congratulations, by the way, the, to the Image Choir from Judson Baptist Church in Nashville, Tennessee. They did a wonderful job on the national anthem here tonight. Outstanding. And our color guard was from the Hall County Fire Department up in the Gainesville area. The 1-1 one, one pitch. A little one-hopper to the second. Vina took a look at the plate, then went to first. And Guillen held up for just a second, fearful that ball might be caught. But Chipper gets his 75th RBI, and it's two to nothing. And the other runner, Williams, stayed at second, which hurts. Yeah, don't forget, Ozzy's played a long time in the American League, and he knows Fernando Vina and knows about how quick he is, and he wanted to make sure that ball bounced first. That's what held Gerald at second base, too. So we're going to have to hit him in rather than sacrifice fly. Strike call. Williams dancing around at second. That may bother Galarraga. Vina is going to have to play over close to the bag. And Andres has a lot of room on the right side if he wants to go that way, and he can if he wishes. He was willing to last night against yeah. Mike Myers, the side arming submarining left hander. He was willing to take the base hit to right. Woodall can't get together with Bobby Hughes. So the catcher heads to the mound to talk things over with him. Let's see when the Cardinals come in here. I know everybody's going to be interested in batting practice. The one bad thing about that being a Saturday game in the heat here, I don't know if the Cardinals will hit. But on a Friday night, 740 game, we hit at 515 till what, about 10 to 6? Uh, 610. 610. So immediately thereafter, the Cardinals will hit. 0 oh, 2 the count. Colorado was looking for something to pull there and got fooled and just had a wave at that one. 
He's in the hole. Javi Lopez on deck. Just missed the inside corner. That was a pretty good pitch. Yes, One and was. two to count. Brett Woodall's learned a few things when he has been into the big leagues with the Braves. Sitting on or about the vicinity of Tom Glavin. Took a shot at right field, even with two strikes, but popped it away. And Not Greg Maddox and John Smoltz. And was two and two with Atlanta two years ago. Last year spent the entire year at Richmond. I know for some people think I'm nuts talking about watching Mark McGuire take batting practice. But it really is fun if you haven't seen him. Oh, and they come early all over the National League to watch him. There'll be some Braves outside, too. Two balls, two strikes. Yeah, I remember in St. Louis. There were more Braves around the batting cage than there were Cardinals. Two and two the count to the right hand hitter. Again Hughes and Woodall have trouble communicating here. Two nothing is our score runner at second one out. Now he's finally ready. And the 2 2 got him. Took a little off the breaking ball. So Galarraga's 0 for 2. That is Woodall's third strikeout. Javi Lopez, the batter. Whoever won that debate had the right idea about how to get him out. And speaking of Mark McGuire, I'm going to take a look at the watch on the home run chase. Mark McGuire now with 40 home runs, Griffey with 39, Sammy Sosa with 35. And you can see the pace that those three gentlemen are on. But you know guys like Vaughn and Galarraga if one of one of them has one of those 15 home run months in August all of a sudden they're in the hunt. There goes the runner to third but it won't matter ground ball to short Mark Loretta has it and the inning is over so pretty good damage control by Woodall. He gives up a run on two hits and the Braves leave one and at the end of three it's two nothing Atlanta. Speaking of Mark McGuire, as we just were, number 41 just sailed off his bat. 41 homers. Brian Bohannon is in his second start for the Dodgers since being acquired from the Mets. He got roughed up in his first start, gave up some home runs. That was against the Padres, if I'm not mistaken. And now McGuire in the first inning launches one off of him. Well, he'll be able to tell his grandchildren that he was roughed up by two of the great power hitters in baseball. Raphael Belliard and Mark McGuire have been homers against him. We go to the fourth inning. Outside, one ball, no strikes. Rafi still plugging away, hoping to get back on the active list soon. Loretta shortened the bunt but took a strike. Apparently the doctors have been, you know, just taking that real carefully, trying to make sure his leg's 100% before they release him. The 1-1 pitch. Downstairs, two balls, one strike. Loretta singled his first time, a little bloop in the short right. Mets have increased their lead to three nothing over the Phillies and that's outside three balls one strike. This guy was an All-American out of Northwestern got his degree Big Ten player of the year while he was there. What a great school that is. Boy, boy. Fly ball left Bautista battles the lights puts it away one down. Loretta is retired. They have a wonderful journalism school in Northwestern. As they do at Missouri, University of Georgia's got a good one now, too. How would we know if Missouri had one? I rest my case. You're number one, Joe. Oh, okay. <laughs> one out, nobody on. George C. Scott, the great actor, attended the University of Missouri. 
which has nothing to do with the journalism <laughs> school, but I thought I'd throw that in. <laughs> Friends up there tell me that Mr. Scott, when he was there, frequented a place that's no longer there, but that I used to frequent as well, called the Green Door. Remember the song? Mm -hmm. It was named after a little pub in Columbia, Missouri. What a spot. Two balls and a strike. One out here in the fourth. Gerald Williams on his horse on the track. Oh, that ball really carried. Two down. Yeah, that's that wind that Joe was talking about. Gerald had to go a long way to get that ball. And John Jaha is the banner. Two things. Shows you how strong Cirillo is to the opposite field and how much ground Gerald can cover even though he plays shallow and right. Did a good job getting back there and made the catch just shy of the fence on in front of the auxiliary scoreboard. Jaha flied to deep left his first time. One ball, no strikes. Do we talk a lot about Eddie Perez framing pitches and setting up for the pitchers real well? Watch Javi here set up early for Glavin and then never even really had to move his glove. And sometimes I think we neglect to talk about how much Javi has improved as a catcher since he first came up. Oh he really has. Jaha solid single. And Jeremy Burnett's the batter represents the tying run. We see catchers from other ball clubs very late in putting the target up showing the glove to the pitcher but the Braves pitchers all get a good look at the catcher's glove before they, they even start into their delivery. That's the third hit of the night for the Brew Crew. Right through there, 0 and 1. Burnett's out on strikes his first time. Glavin has struck out two. He has not walked anywhere. He's clicking along just about where he ought to be as far as pitches are concerned. That's one thing about June, July, and August and September in Atlanta. You're going to go to your bullpen a lot because of the heat. Even if you do have a great starting staff like the Braves have. The ground ball pitchers help there too. If you could get in spots and get a double play to save you some pitches in an inning. He guessed wrong on that one. It's one and two. And you, you think about ball clubs like Texas, and that's one of the things that they have to contend with every year. And the way, one of the things they talk about every year is how Texas is always very competitive until August, and then they're worn out. Especially this year, boy, it's been brutal now. Uh huh. Inning over. Strikeout number 98 of the year for Burnett's. Strikeout number three for Glavin. One hit, no runs, no errors. One left, bottom of the fourth. 2 nothing, Atlanta. We go to the bottom half of the fourth inning. Time for tonight's AFLAC trivia question. Who was the last teammate of Hank Aaron to remain active in the big leagues? We'll give you the answer to that one. Next half inning. Hmm. Andrew up the middle. Loretta can't get there. One of those Milwaukee guys, I'll bet you. Andrew Jones gets a lot of ground ball base hits through the infield. Many reasons for that, but I think the biggest is that he puts so much topspin on the ball with his swing that it actually picks up a little speed at the second or third hop. Danny Bautista homered his first time. Andrew, 9 out of 10 in the stolen base department. He's not running on the first pitch, which is outside. One ball, no strengths. 
Bautista has reached the 200 mark with that circuit bump back in the second inning. And that is six hits surrendered by Brad Woodall to this point in the game. Close. We got back. Bobby Dews runs through the signs at third. Bautista carefully scrutinizes him. And now we're ready. Again, close, but again, he's back. It's a good snap throw. He's got a good move to first base, too, with a big high leg kick that he keeps in front of the pitching rubber so it's not the ball. One ball, no strikes. Runner goes, pitches high. Somebody missed a sign, but it works out for the best. And Andrew will wind up in third. I think there was supposed to be a hit and run there, but it worked out very nicely. Stolen base and an air. Well, something else that looked somewhat peculiar to me was why Vina didn't catch that ball. Did he not have any chance at all to flag that down? Hughes had a perfect pitch to throw on and then just launched one. Let's see if Vina had a chance to catch this ball if it was just way too. It's almost like he was trying to fake Andrew out and give up on the ball. Either that or he hit the bag. Maybe. And sort of stumbled. Well, there's a break. 2 0 the count to Bautista. Oh, he had some cut mm. there, didn't he? Two and one. Another pitch up. Bobby loved the home run, of course, and I'm sure Danny did too, but he can win some points from his manager again here with some good situational hitting. Just getting that runner in. Infield is at halfway depth for Milwaukee. That's out of play, and it's two and two. Nice one-handed grab. It didn't even spill his nachos. Or his hot dog. Play. I uh, pop. I don't think it's deep enough. Newfield comes on. Bautista unable to get the run home, and Tony Graffanino, the scheduled hitter, first base is open. The pitcher is next. Let's see how Brad Woodall and the Brewers choose to play it here. Two six and zero oh for Atlanta. O oh, three and one for Milwaukee. I don't know how aware Milwaukee scouting reports are on how well Tony's been swinging the bat over the last three or four games, but at this stage of the order. You might be inclined to hope you can get Tony and then pitch to Tommy with two outs. It looks like that's what they're going to do and bring the infield in even closer. Graffinino singled his first time. Let's see if he can make him pay here. Nope. Right up the shoot. Shoot. Vina. Two out. Not good. So it's all up to Tom Glavin and the break the Braves got. Looks like it's going to be wasted. By the way, Ruben Rivera. Just hit a grand slam for the Padres in the fourth inning. And they lead Cincinnati nine to two. They have an eight game lead over San Francisco out west. They are 33 and nine at home. Only the Yankees have a better home record than the Padres. They're pretty doggone good as very good. Are. Andrew down the line the pitch. Glavin hits a little tapper to second and we're on third nobody out the Braves don't get him home and you wonder if that'll come home to roost later one hit no run one air. One left at the end of four, two nothing Atlanta. He will be eligible for the Hall of Fame vote next January. A career 285 hitter, 251 homers, 1400 RBIs, and over 3,000 hits. He, George Brett, Nolan Ryan, all eligible same time, weren't they? Carlton Fisk should all go in. Yep. Oh, and one the count to Marquise. He was a strikeout victim his first time. 2 nothing our score, but the Braves squandered have squandered a couple of chances here to add on to that lead. There's a solid hit for Marquise. 
He's aboard with nobody out. Hitting some tough luck last night. But watch this swing, how with his upper body, he stayed over the plate and on this ball. Head stayed on the ball, didn't pull off, and drove it right through the hole on the right side. Nice swing. So the tying run comes to the plate, and the person of Mark Newfield, who grounded to third, his first time. Outside, one ball, no strengths. Mets now 3-0 over the Phillies, bottom of the fifth. Mark McGuire's 41st homer has given the Cardinals the lead. I read somewhere the other day that every time McGuire takes a day off, it costs the Cardinals 6,000 paid admissions and around $100,000. Surprised it's not more than that, and it may be as the year goes along. They've got to quit announcing the days he's going to take off. Well, I think, <laughs> I think they feel they owe that to the fans. Here's one of those situations we were talking about an inning or so ago about on a hot, humid night, maybe saving yourself some pitches if you can get that ground ball. Two and one the count. Field hit into two double plays last night. So it would be nice of him to go along with the program again. new stadium won't be ready until the year 2000 is that right I believe so yes being built in the center field shadows of County Stadium and then I guess I'll blow it up and make that the parking lot huh? sort of like we did here Full count. Let's see if they send the runner. San Diego, by the way, will be here in Atlanta on the 20th and 21st of August for one of those awful two-game series. We go out there for three the week before that. Payoff pitch instead the first. Grissom back. Marquise with only five stolen bases this year. In 12 attempts. Unusual to see that he's only had five stolen bases. It's more unusual to see that he's been caught that many times. There he goes. Fouled away. It's still three and two, and we'll have it to do all over again. It would appear that Tom Glavin and the Braves feel that Newfield is trying to pull everything. Because even when he was ahead in the count, Tom was trying to get him to chase a pitch off the plate that really wasn't anywhere close. And they stayed away even three and two, and he offered it a pitch that was a little off the plate. Well, if Grissom ran that time, you figure he'll run again. That's why it's unusual he's been caught seven times. High pop on the infield. Marquise returns to first. Graffinino makes the play. Newfield doesn't run it out. And one is out. Well, when you're not going good and you don't run down the first baseline, you're not helping yourself with your manager. Now he had been he had a little hitting streak working until last night. I realize he hit into two double plays last night, but that was one of those times where an infielder could have let it drop and had an easy double play because the batter didn't run. And right. for Phil Garner, I'm sorry, Skip, for Phil Garner, that's the kind of stuff that eats at him because he was the type of player who gave you everything he had every day. Well, I love to watch him play. He was terrific. Well hit by Hughes into center, but Andrew is equal to the task. Two out. And it looks like we may get a pinch hitter here. Now that's Brad Woodall. I forgot he was a switch hitter. So I lied. Just trying to get him out of the game after that great job he did in the bottom of the fourth. No, 
know. I think this would be perfect. Just win two nothing. He will have pitched very very well, and we will have gotten the victory, and everybody will be sort of happy. I like the way you put it when you were talking to him to Bobby Cox about him tonight. You said you pull for him, just not tonight. That's what this game is all about. Two balls, no strikes. Like you pull for Marquise Grissom every day. Mm -hmm. And a lot of other guys, too. To think of it. Two and one, the count. They played hit and run with Woodall his first time, and he grounded the first. As of game time, a few tickets remain for tomorrow, as well, of course, as the skyline and standing room seats go on sale prior to the game. That should end the inning. Graffinino calls for it. Uh, Andrew does his job, calls him up, as he should. Makes the catch, and the inning is over. One hit, no runs, no errors. One left. We go to the bottom half of the fifth inning. Pete and Don join you now. 2 nothing, Atlanta. Yeah, and it's a ball club. The Brewers are a ball club, Pete, that you would think with their Phil Garner style of play would, would play just a little bit more aggressively, but they haven't done it against Maddox, and they're not doing it against Glavin, and they're not the kind of ball club that can sit back and wait for the three-run homers. They're no, going to have to put the pressure on, and I would really be surprised if more ball clubs don't take the tact of Jim Leland and the Florida Marlins and play with a little bit more reckless abandon. Isn't it fun watching two pitchers similar style? You wonder how much influence being around Tom Glavin might have had on Brad Woodall. And with all Brad Woodall has gone through, even against you, it's nice to see him pitch well. And you can see how the Braves have dominated in virtually every category this year. Only one loss in six games. And leading here 2 nothing with Ozzie Guillen leading off. First pitch swinging right at Vina. One pitch, one out. And that'll bring up Daryl Williams, who has a double in two trips. The Braves have had at least one hit in each inning off of Woodall. Six all together. He did a good job back in the fourth inning. He had a runner at third. Nobody out and got out of it. Oh. Outside corner on one. Backhanded play by Loretta. Gets Gerald Williams two down. That was close. You know what I like, though, that Mark Loretta did? You'll see a lot of infielders that would have backhanded that and tried to jump and throw and snap, but he takes his time. He knows his greatest chance is to set himself, come up over the top, and get more on it. So he was trusting making up time with the throw rather than making up time with fielding and jumping. Nice play. Two gone. Now Chipper Jones steps in. A single in the first inning to extend his hitting streak to six games. Rounded out to second, driving in the 75th run of the year in the third. One and one the count on Chipper. Chased a high fastball. Still looking for that first home run from the right side. It's funny watching him hit. He knows when he's done something because he'll tap himself on the helmet when he's pulled out or taken a bad swing at a pitch. One and two. Just off the corner, two balls, two strikes. Well, both of these pitchers are pitching well with a hitter's umpire back there. Rich Reeker is an excellent umpire. This whole crew is a great one, but he you've got to put it over the edge to get the call. High and deep to left field. This might be his first one from the right side. Newfield can't find it. Doesn't matter. Home run number one right handed this year for Chipper Jones. His 25th homer of the year, his 76th RBI. And it's 3 nothing Atlanta. And right now, I'll bet you Brad Woodall is thinking, I should have gotten that call. I wouldn't have had to make the pitch. 
But if you're going to come inside, if you're a left-hander and you're not throwing 90-something miles an hour, you've got to get it inside. See, they want it inside, but this catches about half the plate. Belt high, that's a hitter's delight. Perfect pitch to hit. And this is the time of night when the outfielders sometimes have trouble. Watch Newfield. He has no idea there where that ball is. But it didn't matter because it was in the seats. So after hitting 24 home runs left-handed, Chipper Jones finally gets that right-handed monkey off his back. He had only one right-handed home run last year. Doesn't it seem like we have seen more balls lost this year, this time of the night, than I remember last year? Seems to. That trickled off of Cirillo's glove over to Loretta, but he had no chance to get down along. It'll be a base hit. I just came across some information on the internet today about Chipper Jones and the home runs as you look at Galarraga again. If he had gone all season without hitting a home run right-handed, that would have been a record for a switch hitter. The most home runs hit by a switch hitter from one side of the plate without hitting one from the other side of the plate in a single season, 16. Roy Cullenbine left-handed with Cleveland in 1944, and Pete Rose with Cincinnati in 1969. All of his home runs were left-handed. But Chipper Jones no longer has to worry about that. Here's Javi Lopez. He's grounded out twice tonight. Takes a strike on one. Braves up 3-0. They've out hit the Brewers. 8-4. Yeah, at that point you were making about balls lost this time of night, and especially here at Turner Field. We've seen a lot of that this year at this ballpark, more so than some of the others. But I don't remember that happening no, as I don't. much last Not year. Not as much last year, I don't either. Was the schedule different? Does that have something no, to do with it? El Nino. It's always El Nino. It's the cause of everything this year. Over to first, back safely is Galarraga. Well, I think you could also trace it back a little further to the cutting of the rainforest, too. The 0-2 to Lopez. Missing low and away. One ball, two strikes. That's 14 home runs allowed by Woodall. That's, uh, That's an awful like high total for less than 75 innings. Still a ball and two strikes on Lopez. The damage coming here in the fifth inning after two men were out. That's all for Lopez, and that's all for Atlanta. Woodall's fourth strikeout, but Chipper Jones, with his first right-handed home run of the year, has made it 3-0 Atlanta. Pitching duel as we head to the sixth inning, and that's your Budweiser game summary. And the top of the order to up for the Brewers, Vina Loretta Cirillo. I know we have a home run race chasing the Roger Maris record. We have a home run race. Yes, we do. Sammy Sosa just hit number 36. It's now 6-1. to one. Cubs over Florida. They are in the sixth inning. McGuire hit number 41 earlier tonight. Greg Vaughn hit number 31 earlier tonight. You know, if one guy is going to do it, I really think the fact that there are three or four chasing it is going to help that oh, one guy. Oh, I think it will, too. I think it will, too. Because all of a sudden, you can't have 2,000 people following him. you got to go right. 500, 500, and 500. It'll take the focus off of that one individual and spread it around a little. I agree. One ball, one strike. Brian Bohannon gave up the home run to Mark McGuire tonight. He joins a... He's on a very short list. He has given up home runs to Mark McGuire and Raphael Belliard. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That is a short list. Well, there are a lot of similarities in the two. Oh, there's one. They're both right handed. Well, 
both like art. Hey, one record that seems certain to fall. If they don't break the Maris record, first the pitch to Vena, bouncing ball to second. Rapinino on the first in time. If they don't break the Maris record this year, and I really think somebody will, it looks like almost as certainly that somebody's going to have a new record in the National League. Hack Wilson's 56 is finally going to fall after all those years. McGuire's only 15 away from that. Remember, he hit 58 last year, but not all in the same league. Here's Mark Loretta. A single and a fly out to left. I'd like to hit 58 home runs. Is that what he had? 58 home runs and, and lead neither league. Yeah. A little asterisk in all the record books saying that although he was not the league leader, he did hit 58 combined in the two leagues. One ball, one strike. Tom Glavitt is doing a really good job of mixing his pitches tonight because he doesn't have that paralyzing change up down and away. See that one right there. See, he's just missing with it, not getting the call and, and not coming close enough. So he's really adjusted and he's gotten outs other ways. That's a that's a mark of a veteran. Here's the two one. And that just missed three and one. McGuire's home run has broken the National League record for most home runs by the end of July. Matt Williams had 41 home runs at the end of July in 1994. There's ball four to Mark Loretta. First walk issued by Glavin. It also ties the major league record for most home runs by the end of July. Babe Ruth in 1928, Jimmy Fox in 1932 had 41. So McGuire's next home run will set a new standard if he hits it within the next 14 days, and I'll bet he does. It seems like a pretty safe wager. Here's Jeff Cirillo. Get into a 5-4-3 double play in the first, fly to right in the fourth. One ball, no strikes. Cirillo now one for six in the series. And he's been a hot hitter the last three weeks, hitting at a 363 clip. We were noticing, we were talking about this earlier, Don. Uh, you look through the players on these teams who have come up through these farm systems, the Braves players who've come up through the Braves farm system and the Milwaukee players who've come up through their system. For the most part, Braves like to sign high school players and develop them. And for the most part, it seems Milwaukee goes after the college player. That's a little more, a little closer to being ready to play at a higher level. And one of the reasons may be the Braves have more farm teams, especially at the rookie and short season stage so they can afford to keep a player around a little longer and the philosophy of the Brewers could be let's let them do their short a season yeah. in college let the college do some work and I'm sure uh, all of it you can trace it all the way back to somewhere it has to do with budget how much money do you have budgeted to sign and develop minor leaguers Glavin is just missing he's walked one and he's behind three and oh now on Jeff Cirillo now, the Braves have the luxury of having basically three rookie league teams. They've got the team in the Gulf Coast League. They've got a team in Danville. They've got a team in Eugene. And what the Braves, for the most part, do is send their high school draftees to the Gulf Coast League. The college draftees go to Eugene. And then in Danville is somewhat of a mix. Some of those players at Danville are there for a second year. Now, not every major league team has that many farm system, uh, that many farm teams at that level, so they can't keep players around quite as long if they don't have a good first or second year. And the Brewer philosophy, more like the NFL and the NBA. All right now, Tom Glavin having a little trouble with control, back-to-back -back walks. Well, if you're going to miss, especially with this guy and the next guy hitting, Jaha and Burnett, you want to miss just a little off, not a little in the heart of the strike zone. Jaha won for two. He had a single in the fourth inning, one of only four hits allowed by Glavin. And his pitch count starting to mount pretty good now, Pete. Ball one to John Jaha. Jaha hardly ever 
grounds into a double play. He doesn't hit many ground balls. Only grounded into three double plays this year. Fly ball hitter. The Braves don't expect him to be a pole hitter. They're shading him toward the right field side. Gets away from Lopez, but not far enough. One ball, one strike, and Jaha. You know, I'm not so sure the Braves don't set their defense more toward how their pitching staff pitches than they do to whether a guy is, is called a pole hitter or an opposite field hitter. Well, I agree. And they have the confidence in the starting pitchers especially that they're going to be able to make those pitches to those locations. Just like that. Which just missed again. Ball two. We're not used to seeing Tom Glavin struggle control-wise in the sixth or seventh inning. Usually, if he has trouble locating the strike zone and locating its spot, it's always come in the first inning. Andrew Jones shaded toward right center. That's where Jaha hits it. Loretta will tag at second, move over to third. Two gone. See what Glavin did, although he had been missing, he didn't just reach back and say, okay, I'm going to get a strike one way or another. He stayed out there two reasons you assume sooner or later you're going to hit the strike zone and the other thing is hitters become impatient see that's not a strike that's the same pitch that's been called a ball but I think when you especially a big strong guy who wants to hit a three run homer and tie it up hitters become impatient and all all of a sudden yep and they get frustrated when they get impatient it doesn't deliver too but all of a sudden a pitcher's pitch that isn't a good one becomes an out pitch because of the impatience now Jeremy Burnett who has struck out twice and is closing in on the 100 strikeout mark. He has struck out 98 times now this season. Jim Tomey of the Indians has already struck out 100 times over in the American League. One and one. First and third with two outs. Braves up 3 nothing. Here in the top of the sixth. Little roller. Glavin will have to hurry. Gets it on the first in time. He's out of the inning. Leaving runners at the corners. And we go to the bottom half of the sixth. Both races start at 105, and both of them have it right where you have your dial set on TBS. 3 0 Atlanta, bottom half of the sixth. Here's Andrew Jones, a strikeout and a single for Andrew so far tonight, taking ball one. That's some fireworks up in Montreal. Pirates leading the Expos 5 to 1 in the sixth inning. They just had a bench clearing brawl up there. Javier Vasquez pitching for Montreal. Aramis Ramirez hitting for Pittsburgh. Ramirez hit by a pitch, one after the pitcher. Pitcher and the hitter both thrown out of the game. That's, Ramirez is what, 19 and mm -hmm. Vasquez 21? A couple of youngsters. Yeah, they're going to cut their curfew back to 11 o'clock because of that. Can you find a 19 year old? I guess you can. One ball, one strike on Andrew Jones. Fly ball, left center field and deep. This one's going to be the first home run for Andrew Jones in his last 28 games. Home run number 13 of the year, 4 nothing Atlanta. Well, there's some happy people in the Braves dugout. There's a happy youngster in the left field seats, and there's a happy youngster right there, breaking that spell of almost 100 at bats. Look like he got a hang-in change up. They want to go down and away. That is right down the middle, full extension. And there were three people who knew that right away, that it was gone. Andrew Jones, the catcher, and Woodall. And that might be the end of the night for Woodall. That's three homers. And the home run has been his undoing tonight. A solo shot by Danny Bautista in the second. A solo shot by Chipper Jones in the fifth. And a solo shot by Andrew to lead off the sixth. And it's not going to be at the end of the night. That was just a little pep rally by Phil Gardner. Danny Bautista, a home run and a fly out and two at bats. Just 
second solo homer he's given up to Andrew this year. Nothing in one on Danny Bautista, who got the Braves scoring started tonight with a two-out solo homer. In the second. In the left center field. Newfield on the run. Can't get to that one. It's a base hit. Ten hits now for the Braves. They've gotten at least one hit in every inning off of Brad Woodall. And Tony Graffinino will step in. He has a single and two trips. That's Mike Myers. Deep to left by Graffinino. Caught right up against the wall by Newfield. Tagging and heading back to first base is Danny Bautista. He thought that ball was going to be off the wall, had rounded the bag at second, had to re-tag it on the way back. But Graffinino just missed hitting one out. There's some wind up there, and I think it's having an effect tonight because that ball just got up and hung there. It looked like he got all of it. Maybe got it a little in on the handle. But right about there, Newfield thinks it's gone. But see how it drifted back towards center? There's Danny Batista. You must retouch and go back, and he did. One man gone. Tom Glavin steps in. He has struck out and grounded out to second. trying to get their record up to 64 wins and 32 losses. That's winning two out of every three games that the Braves have played this year if, they able, if they're able to hang on here tonight. Translates to about 108 wins, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Butted by Glavin, Woodall. First in time, Bautista down to second on the sacrifice. Dave Weathers is up now in the Milwaukee bullpen. He's a well-traveled guy. It seems like we run into him two or three times a year with two or three different teams. True. Two gone, runner at second for Ozzie Guillen, who's one for three. I think part of his appeal is that he'll get up every night and warm up for you. One ball, no strikes. one at a time tonight. One in the second, one in the third, one in the fifth, one here in the sixth. That ball almost hit Bautista. Ian out at first. So it all settles down after getting up the home run in the base hit. Gets out of the inning with no further damage, but it's now 4 nothing as Andrew Jones joins the home run parade. I did a great deal of research on the automobile. I looked at the Honda Civic, Ford Probe, And we are back at Turner Field with Marquise Grissom leading it off against Tom Glavin. Marquise one for two. Four nothing Braves on top. Grissom has struck out in single. He's now one for seven in the series. Two and oh. to hitting that looks like it should be a pitch he handles doesn't it two and two it's almost like he's swinging at an invisible ball though he I haven't seen him hit a pitch up and away from him against the Braves this whole year he 
Pete's got a piece of that one. Still two and two. Sometimes, Pete, you find out things accidentally. Like, uh, you know, you'll, you'll have a book on a hitter. And I remember that the book on Hank Aaron used to be throw him off speed breaking balls. And I think out of desperation one night, that came about. And uh, out of a pitch that slipped. And uh, the, the pitch slipped. And so it ended up just coming in there like a spinning curveball. And I remember being told when I got the scouting reports when we were with the Dodgers, he doesn't like off-speed curveballs, and the story was relayed to me. And sure enough, you find that out. The same was true with the late Jim Gilliam. They used to just throw him spinners upstairs. But sometimes when you're not trying, it sounds like a ridiculous pitch. It sounds like there is no way. And the reason I think about that is because you would not normally think, I'm going to go up and away to a Marquise Grissom as a line drive hitter. But you may find something accidentally on a guy's swing and you know Greg Maddox registers that. Oh yeah, the approach that what happens to a guy. And Tom Glavin doesn't miss much either. No, you're right. One and one now in Mark Newfield. Tomaso Garcia, remember him? Oh, absolutely. He played here a couple of years. Uh, used to be able to pitch him outside corner above the belt. And it, and you would think here's a line drive hitter. You think no way you're going to get one hit off your forehead. But he just never, for some reason, some hitters have blind spots. Some players have other ways of abusing themselves. One and two now on Mark Newfield. Two and two. Fills the count three and two. You talked about Glavin's pitch count an inning ago. Up over a hundred now. And you wonder if the Braves do go to the bullpen tonight. How they will use the people out there in this one. Dipper Jones throws on Newfield. Two away. Sometimes when you have a high pitch count and you're not making pitches you want, you need outs on accidents, just like finding out about a guy accidentally. 3-2, he wants to go down and away. That's a ball. That's ball four. But a hitter, because uh, aggressive on a 3-2, gets you an out, and you need that out if you're throwing that many pitches. Mark Roller's second night back with the team was not used last night. Bobby Hughes, the batter. He is singled. He is fly to center. Line down the left field line. That's a fair ball. He hung that pitch, and Hughes all over it. He's going to round first, head for second, and he'll go in standing with a two-out double. Same pitch he got the base hit to left on in the third inning. And that's probably going to be a good news, bad news uh, for the Brewers. It means that they get a hit, they get a runner at second, but for Brad Woodall, it's probably going to mean the end of the night. Hang in change up. Yank past Chipper Jones. Remember, we told you earlier that Chipper Jones is playing most of the guys way off the line. Now we're going to get a pinch hitter, Dave Nilsson. Will bat for Brad Woodall. He was one of about four or five Brewers who were out here very early today, much, well, maybe an hour and a half before the team got here. He takes some extra VP. He's been struggling at the plate. Since coming back off the disabled, they're hitting 273, but with only one home run and 18 RBIs. And that's the area that is really down for him. He should be more productive than that with a long ball. One ball, no strikes. Dennis Martinez now throwing in the Atlanta bullpen. Two and zero. Two men out here in the top of the seventh. Ball three. And with Bobby Cox, it is a combination of number of pitches and quality of pitches. He might look at uh, Glavin not locating and not having zip at 88 and think it could be worse than his 112th. 
and there's no standard we've talked before about the ideal pitch count to par for an inning for example for a Braves pitchers 13 pitches if you throw 13 pitches you're right where you should be if you're under that you're doing better if you're over that you're laboring a little bit but the uh, par for the course is a little different for each pitcher up the middle Ozzie Gian can't get to it Bobby Hughes around third heading home here comes Andrews throw he is out Andrew Jones guns down another one of disbelief on base runners faces after throws like this. That's a tag by Javi Lopez. Now he's set for a slide but Hughes came in standing and if you see right here Rich Reeker right on top of the play and right there the tag will catch him on the calf as the foot comes down. Perfect perfect. Uh, camera angle. You think Andrew Jones doesn't get a little into this? What's that? There are guys who throw the shot putt that don't get that much into it. Nice throw, nice tag by Javi Lopez. He had to adjust there because everything in your being tells you he's going to come sliding. I got to ride him off the plate. And he started down to tag the slide and caught him right on the calf. Nice call. Nice play, nice call. And a new pitcher, David Weathers, takes over for. Milwaukee here in the seventh inning. Woodall works six, about ten hits, four runs, all earned, no walks, four strikeouts. There, the number is on David Weathers, a very, very well traveled pitcher, as we mentioned. He has really put in some miles the last few years. He pitched for Toronto originally, then for Florida for a little over two years, and then the travels began. In 96, he was with Charlotte, Florida, Columbus, and the Yankees. In 97, the Yankees, Columbus, Cleveland, and Buffalo. Darrell Williams out on one pitch. And over in Cincinnati this year before coming over to Milwaukee. Jimmer Jones, whose last time up in the fifth inning, saw him get his first right-handed home run of the year off his old teammate Brad Woodall. He has 25 on the year with 76 RBIs. saw that note up on Andrew Jones. He's now tied for the lead, by the way, in outfield assists with Jose Guillen of the Pirates, Bobby Abreu of the Phillies with 11. And that is a throw that you just don't very often see from a center fielder. And that's a time, too, we always talk about hitting the cutoff, man, but you're up by four and two outs. You take a shot on that one. I think if it's a, let's say that uh, who got the base hit? Nielsen. If he is the possible tying run, you got to be dead sure. Or let's say Nielsen is a possible go ahead or tying run. You got to be dead sure you're going to throw the guy out because you want to prevent a big inning. But with a lead like that, hey, not a high risk, but it is a high reward. Two and two on Chipper. the New York Mets that had Bobby Valentine raving about that being the best mm -hmm. arm and an outfielder he had seen since Roberto Clemente. Well, it's just been displayed again. And Andres Galarraga stepping in. Galarraga one for three. And what's fun to watch, he always seems to get perfect backspin on his throws, too. When he gets a hop, it's almost always a straight-ahead hop. That time he threw it in the fly. But you see some outfielders who cut the ball down, they, uh, they'll get a little under it, a little to the side, and you always get ugly hops coming off of that. One strike pitch to Galarraga inside. One and one.
Count goes to two and one. Scott Weathers with a six earned run average, the way he's been throwing the first three hitters tonight. Colorado just staying alive. Had a good postseason for the Yankees in '96. Probably the best pitching he's done in his career. And a 1 2 3 inning here in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Still 4 0 Atlanta as we head to the eighth. Pair by Gwynn. It's the Cubs by five over Florida. Traxel benefiting for those runs. Sosa is 36 homer. Pittsburgh. Argument, slugfest at all, beating Montreal by five. The Mets behind Nomo are shutting out Philadelphia. Houston just put a five spot on the board. They lead seven to three now. L.A. and St. Louis, it's a pitcher's duel. One swing of Mark McGuire's bat. The only run in that one over in the American League. Detroit by two over Boston. It, despite three home runs by the Boston Red Sox, three of them solo shots. The Yankees trail Toronto. Clemens pitching that one. David Wells scheduled to start for the Yankees, was scratched. Pitching duel Nagy against Parquet. Over in White Sox in Cleveland, Tampa Bay and Texas tied there in the bottom of the third. And that should be just about it on our Delta scoreboard for all the latest news and notes. Check cnnsi.com it's the ultimate address for sports and Pete looks like you got a defensive change we have a new pitcher Dennis Martinez taking over in the eighth inning for Tom Glavin who worked seven scoreless innings tonight giving up six hits two walks three strikeouts lowers his ERA to 2.71 there you see the numbers on El Presidente for the year making his 28th appearance his 23rd in relief And the top of the order due up for the Brewers here, beginning with Fernando Vina, guy that Bobby Cox really talks highly of, Fernando Vina. He really likes the way this guy plays. Hard not to. He's a good defensive player, a very aggressive hitter, and always, almost always puts the ball in play. First pitch swinging against Martinez, fly ball right center. Andrew there, one pitch, one out in the eighth. And the batter will be Mark Loretta. Most of these hitters in the Milwaukee lineup have seen Martinez and have seen him lately because he was over in the American League the last few years where the Brewers played. Loretta, for example, two for four lifetime against Dennis. Takes a strike on one. Martinez most effective pitching this year came against Milwaukee. Remember that start and that shutout against the Brewers at County Stadium on the Braves trip up there. Yes he gave up 12 hits but yes he shut them out. In the air to right. Two away. That was the night that Martinez tied Juan Marichal for career wins by a Latin American pitcher. He is still tied. And Jeff Cirillo steps in. Cirillo just one for six in this series. Tonight he's hit into a double play, fly to right, and walked over for two. Brewer fans who are watching our broadcast we'll see a, and who remember Robin Young will remember we'll see a marked uh, resemblance between Cirillo and Robin Young's style of hitting including watch how he sets at the beginning he'll lean his hands way forward toward the pitcher settle in Young used to do that then he said well watch how he leans way down right there and then lays the bat back high over his right shoulder Almost identical to Robin Young. Two and one. 
one of the two or three best athletes I ever played with. No doubt in my mind he could have thrown a dart at a board, picked a sport, and been good at it. Three and one the count. Now I think he's got an auto racing team, which Mr. Seeling is very happy he waited till afterwards to oh, get yeah. involved in. Here's the 3-1 pitch, and he walked it. Second time tonight that Cirillo has walked, and John Jaha will be the batter. Now Jaha has gone six for 15, a 400 batting average with one career homer against Martinez. Tonight he's one for three, a single. fly ball but Gerald Williams right there to make the catch and Martinez breezes through the eighth inning the walk was all he allowed we go to the bottom half still four nothing come in for two Monday Tuesday you'll look elsewhere for that Wednesday the Phillies also elsewhere back on the Braves Network at Philadelphia remember that's just a two game set there and that's what's on deck for the Braves New shortstop Jose Valentin takes over for Loretta as we go to the bottom half of the eighth inning. Javi Lopez leads off against David Weathers. Lopez 0 for 3. It's grounded out to third, grounded out to short, and struck out. Loretta has moved over to first, replacing Jaha. So it's Jaha who is out of the game. One and one on Lopez. Foul ball. One and two the count. If the Braves can hold on and win here, Milwaukee will be right at the 500 level. And they'll be 500 at home. They'll be 500 on the road. They are about as 500 a ball club as you can be. One under against lefties and two over against righties. One run games, one under. That's it for Lopez. Weathers has been effective. Who is this guy? Four in a row set down, made good pitches on all of them. By the way, Pete, up in that uh, game in Toronto there in the top of the eighth inning there, Toronto is leading it 6-1, to one, another milestone for Roger Clemens. Ten strikeouts through seven innings. Eighty-six times in his career he's had ten or more strikeouts in a ballgame. Now, a guy who's had himself a pretty good night in this one, Andrew Jones, two for three, a single, a home run. He's thrown out a runner at the plate. He has stolen a base. Now has a seven-game hitting streak, up to 271 for the year. Life bet is good for Andrew. I bet he's in the running for the player of the game, too. Well, the ballots are being passed out now. We won't know that until the next inning when the ballots are counted up. A whole lot of lobbying going on. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Reno. I think Attila has already decided. He has to he has to collect the ballots first. And it's a long run out there to that center field camera to get that. <laughs> There's the strike. It's three and one. But he has a new pair of running shoes, and he'll make it back to the truck in time to. Give us the final result of the vote. Brown ball to third, fielded by Cirillo. Over to first in time. Now Danny Bautista, five in a row set down by Weathers. Braves had at least one hit in every inning off of Woodall over the first six, but Weathers is 
Gone five up, five down. Now Bautista, he's had a good night. A home run, a single, fly to left. Got the batting average back up over 200. On the ground is short. Valentin across to Loretta. Not a single good swing for six hitters. Well, now we're going to the ninth inning. It is still 4 nothing Atlanta. Tomorrow night, the opening celebration, the Goodwill Games, they are here again. It is 4 0 Atlanta. Dennis Martinez is going to try to finish it up now for Tom Glavin. Jeremy Burnett's two strikeouts and a bounce out to the pitcher leads off here in the ninth. Braves pitching staff this year with 12 shutouts. Need three outs for number 13. Now Glantz one and one. Nobody else even close. Got three guys out in the bullpen for Atlanta. Mark Wallers is one of them. Kerry Leitenberg is one of them. John Rocker is one of them. I want to know who the three catchers are. Yeah, that's... I know Ned Yost is there. I know Alan Butts is there. And I guess Eddie Perez. I guess that's who your three are. Alan Butts, the batting practice pitcher and catcher for Atlanta. Here's the 1-1 now. Foul away. I want to do. I think that's a first for me. I think three that's guys the, up in the bullpen. I think that's the first time I've ever seen three warming up. When Leo Mazzoni calls out there to find out who's ready, it's sort of like being on that Monty Hall show. Yeah. <laughs> and door number one, number two, number three. Mound number one, number two, and number three. I once played for a manager who will remain nameless that would have warmed up five at a time if he could have. Braves going for their 13th shutout. Mets have pitched nine. Pirates have pitched nine. They're tied for second. Phillies have pitched seven. The Braves going for number 13. That's in the National League. Let's look over in the American League, see if anybody's close. Well, the Yankees have nine. Red Sox have eight. The Brewers, the only team in the major leagues who have not pitched a shutout this year. Look at their total of complete games. They have very few complete games. Just two. But they have, they have not even pitched a combined shutout this year with their bullpen. Here we are going into August with only two complete games. That is all. Let's see if that's the low in the majors. I'm sure it is. It's the low in the National League. Well, not by much. Tampa Bay's only got three. Anaheim's only got three. Cincinnati's only got three. The Giants only have three complete games. Yeah, I guess it's not that big of a deal. But... <laughs> One out here in the ninth. Marquise Grissom is one for three in the ninth. Jones, two men gone in the ninth. Martinez needs one more out. Mark Newfield will be the batter. Another sellout crowd tonight. A lot of them are confident this one is over, and they've begun to head up the exit aisles. 48,544 on hand tonight. Braves on over the two million mark in attendance for the season last night. Now here comes Bobby Cox out. We're going to get. I think you're going to see Mark Wollers. You think this will be Mark Wollers with two I outs? I think you're going to see Mark Wollers this with two outs. This might be the return of Mark Wollers. They've got two outs in the ninth inning. He's only got to get one man out. And here he comes. So all of the expectations of Braves fans, and a lot of folks seeing this, are going to turn around in the aisles and come back down to watch this. Yes, they are. Mark has really struggled at AAA, but he's going to try to get it done here, and he's getting a warm welcome back. It is Mark Wallers coming on as Bobby Cox makes the Bell South call to the bullpen. I felt good about my command, my, my presence, my poise, and the results weren't there, but, you know, I can't control that. You know, you throw the ball, it's either a ball or a strike to hit it, easier to safer out. So I just try to get on the mound, gate maker, pitches, and throw strikes. And 
I think the last statement that he made there is a real key one. I just want to get on the mound, make pitches, and throw strikes. And if he ever wanted some incentive to do, to do well with the struggles he's had this year and uh, a lot of flack on the call-in shows, and I think, too, probably sometimes he has said things he wishes he hadn't said, and it's gone back and forth. This was one of the most wonderful receptions I have seen a crowd give a guy who's gone through struggles. Believe me, more often than not, it goes the other way. And I think Bobby Cox has found an ideal situation to get him back in the ball game. Two outs, ninth inning, a four-run lead. There is no doubt that Mark struggled at Richmond. In seven and two-thirds innings, he gave up 17 hits, walked 14, struck out seven, gave up four home runs through six wild pitches. And this could be a turnaround in his career if he can just get this one hitter out and get him out easily. With two outs in the ninth, Mark Newfield, the batter. And the first pitch from Waller's on the way. Look at the flash bulbs go off. Everybody had a camera at the ballpark, wanted a picture of that. First pitch back for Waller's in his first game with the Braves in over a month. One ball, no strikes. would like to see Javi Lopez not give any sign at all set directly behind the plate they bring it to me in my chest protector because the last thing you want to do for a guy who has struggled with control is give him a smaller target stay behind the plate Wow well this hurts this does hurt because this is the way Mark looked just before they had to send him down and he went down at his own request by the way it wasn't a thing that was forced on him but his last outing against Montreal. Listen to the crowd, though, getting behind him. They want him to do well. I mean, that's, that's a great crowd. You, you, I'm not kidding. More often than not, it's the other way. Well, he wasn't close. Four straight pitches, Mark Newfield walks. His last outing, which came against Montreal before he went down to the Gulf Coast League first to try to work on his mechanics, he walked a man on four straight pitches and bounced a couple of those up there. I think you can let him face two hitters, Pete, but you can't let him face the third one if this happens. And again, not, not to oversay the point, I really think right now you have to keep it simple for him. Stay behind the plate. Don't give a target. Just let him play catch like he's throwing against the wall. And it might have to go from the stretch. Bobby Hughes, two for three, a single, a double, a fly to center. Five in a row of missed. Better delivery, though. That was close, and, and he had a good, good break on the slider. going anywhere because Javi Lopez came up with it that could have been a wild pitch and I'm sorry Don this is this is frightening yeah it is this, this is more of the same what he was doing just before he went to Bobby's office and said I need to go down somewhere and work on my mechanic I mean that wasn't even close and you hate to even mention this name but it's already Steve been mentioned Blass. it's already been mentioned in the couple of newspaper columns there have been interviews done the Steve Blass syndrome the I Bruce playing, Ruffin went through it Joe Cowley went through it I was playing in the National League when Steve Blass went through it I and, I read saw, the, and I saw him in the International League when he was trying to come back there is no explanation for it crowd wants desperately for Mark Wallers to find it again. There's a strike. Runner was going. They weren't paying any attention to him. He won't be given any credit for a stolen base there. But Newfield is down at second. That's the last thing Mark Wallers needs to even think about is that runner out there. This crowd is doing a great job of really supporting are. him in one of the most painful experiences, not only for him, and imagine but the for pressure Bobby he Cox, feels. For everybody on this ball club. Here's the 2-1. Good pitch there. That was the best pitch he's thrown. That was the best pitch he has thrown. It's 2-2. Two and two. This crowd will get on its feet. He, there are guys feeling pain right there, too. Two balls, two strikes, two outs in the ninth. <laughs> 
His breaking ball has been okay. It's been the fastball it, that hasn't even been anywhere near the strike zone. When he's thrown the breaking ball, he's gotten all the strikes that he's gotten on these two hitters. Throw it again if that's what it takes. Two and two with two outs. Down the left field line. That's going to get a run in. Newfield around third. He will score. Heading for second is Bobby Hughes. His third hit of the night. The shutout is gone. It is now four to one. And now let's see what Bobby Cox does. Will he stay with him for one more hitter? One of the things you do is if a hitter, if you see that he is not going to throw a fastball for a strike, that's the intimidating 99 mile an hour fastball that he could not throw a strike. You don't look for a fastball. You go up and say, I'm going to see an off speed pitch if it's not a perfect one. Easier to hit a hanging curve than a fastball. I don't think you can stay with him any longer. And yeah, Bobby Cox will not. He has given the call to the bullpen. He wants the left hander, John Rocker. Bob Hamlin has already been announced as the pinch hitter. Mark Wallers. This crowd is empathizing with him. They understand the problems he's going through, and they're totally behind him. But in all honesty, his first try back in a Braves uniform tonight, a failure. Bob Hamlin announced as the pinch hitter, and Darren Jackson will pinch hit now for Hamlin. But this is going to be a, a situation that the Braves are, it, it'll either solve itself or the Braves are going to have to deal with it in another way. I mean, you, you can't go to postseason with this hanging over your head. Either Mark Wallers is going to come back and, and nail that spot down on the bullpen and pitch well, or the Braves are going to have to make a, make a move to strengthen the bullpen, I would think. Or a commitment to somebody that's already yeah. in the bullpen. And, you know, it's going to be hard for him afterwards because you're going to have to face reporters. You're going to have That'll to face next. questions. And then, then you wish... It doesn't go away. No, I, I wish we could run down and talk to him and encourage him to say, it felt good to be back out there. It didn't turn out the way I wanted. But I can't tell you how much I appreciate the support I got from everybody here because he did. They were 100% behind him. Today. From his dugout to everywhere well last night Rudy Cien has picked up his first save now John Rocker in a position to pick up his first save the tying run is in the on deck circle so he's eligible it's four to one the 0 one pitch fouled back nothing in two on Darren Jackson who is batting 190 with a homer and six RBIs and two on Jackson with two outs. Strike three called. Rocker has earned his first save and the Braves have beaten the Brewers again by a final score of four to one. Not a good night for Mark Wollers, but it was a good night all the way around for a Andrew Jones. Andrew Jones did it with his bat. He did it with his glove. A home run is 11th outfield assist. Take a look at the home run. It came leading off the sixth inning. He got all of it deep to left field. But the big play came a little bit later on in the seventh inning. Single, double, throw to the plate, on time. The tag right on the calf. Andrew Jones doing it both ways tonight. He's our AutoZone player of the game. We'll come back to turn.